Roy once said to do is to be, but the way I look at it, to dance is to see what you can do. A life without music would be a mistake. Nietzsche said there's cause the electric shake, electric shake. Jacob stated, I think so I am, but the way I look at it, I think so I can. I want to see your hips in action. I want to see a match in Jackson. And I wrote this song for you. Way to make you dance. Make you, make you, make you dance. Make you, make you, make you move to the flow and go, 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 go. John Mill thought to think for himself, but I think he meant to jig for himself. He got mind over matter. As a matter of fact, it's good for the soul. That's a cause and effect. I don't mind if you look for the truth between art and art. They discover that you like to rock to the music and roll to the groove. It's what I want to prove. Oh, I wrote this song for you. Cause I really want to see you move. Want to see your hips in action. I want to see you matching Jackson. No, no, no. I wrote this song for you. Go ahead and make you dance. Make you, make you, make you dance. Make you, make you, make you move to the flow and go, 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 go. Let me hear you say, let your mind go, let your body flow, let the rhythm take you by the hand. And make you, make you, make you, make you dance, let your mind go, let your body flow, let the rhythm take you by the hand. And make you, make you, make you, make you dance. been up to? Nothing. Why? Just curious. I thought I heard music. I thought I heard rhythmic tapping. What, dancing? Yeah, dancing. Hmm. It wasn't me. Did you want me to be dancing? No. Nope. You used to want me to be dancing. I've changed my mind. No. Everything ready? Just about. Katie, Lindsay. Who's cooking tonight? I'm going out for dinner. Oh. You don't like watermelon, do you? Well, why do you say that? Because whenever I make watermelon for dinner, you go out. No, not tonight. I really have to go out. Okay. What happened to the furniture? What? The living room furniture. Oh. Well, I felt it was time for a change. A change? Well, I know it seems a bit impulsive. Impulsive? Katie! It's another one of your boyfriends. Katie! Did she call you back? Thanks. Am I supposed to live out my life as some part of a permanent patio party? <laughs> oh, Jack. The furniture will be back next week. It's being reupholstered. What color scheme? Pastel blue. Personally, I prefer the permanent patio party. And if you ask me, what Mother is really trying to do is reupholster her life. I've tried explaining to her that by changing what's on the surface, you can't alter the inherent unhappiness within. Within the furniture? Within the self, Dad. Joanne, 
Is what Lindsay says true? What? That you chose Pastel Blue without consulting me. She's never serious. Did you or did you not authorize a color scheme? Yes, I did. Dr. Snack. Not until your brother gets here. Hello. Happy birthday. What's the occasion? It's his birthday. Uh, the line's been very busy. How could you forget your brother's birthday? Maybe she spent a little less time sequestered in her room with boys. So, what have you been up to? We don't usually celebrate his birthday. He never wants to. He never wants anything. Uh, would you like to pick up at the subway? That's not true. Your brother's just a very well-balanced individual. He doesn't need a lot of attention. All right, I understand. Uh, fine, fine. Uh, see you then, then. I know he doesn't like to be made a fuss of, but that doesn't mean that every once in a while we shouldn't make a fuss. That was him. Is he on his way? He says he's on his way. He's been away, hasn't he? Downtown. He never comes around anymore. He's smart. He says he's been very busy. Doing what? <laughs> This is a very special occasion. Today's your brother's 21st birthday. And as much as we will be mourning the loss of a child, we will be rejoicing as the family will be gaining an adult. I hope we can all do what we can to make this evening something to remember. Uh, Katie, you can start by vacuuming the living room. Uh, Lindsay, you can water the impatience out front. They uh, look a bit wilted. Joanne, I wish there was something I could do to help, but I know you have a system. Well, there is something you could do. You could pick him up at the subway. Don't be ridiculous. He said he wants to walk. Well, he says that, but he doesn't mean it. You know that. I don't know that. Besides, I can't do it. I, uh, I still have to arrange for his special gift. I bought that for old time's sake. I thought we could play. Didn't you used to use Dad for this? Can I ask you something? How come you never left home? Lindsay, I never asked you that same question. I'm only 27, Mother. How come you never left home? Don't touch my face! I was nowhere near your face. Somebody who's going to remember for a long time to come. Midnight. All right. Um, you'll teach him everything there is to know. You sure one evening will be enough? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I appreciate this. Dr. Snack. Yes, I, I see you. Uh, no, I, I'm not really interested. All right. I'll call you at midnight. I'm sure you're fine. You probably didn't want anything special for your birthday. I didn't want anything special. Well, I just got you the usual, some socks and some underwear. 
I'm never sure what color underwear you like. The boys grow tired of wearing white. I guess maybe they do. Your father says he's bought you something special, so you're bound to be disappointed. I won't accept it. Oh, I understand. But I think that just this once, you should accept it. Why? I have a feeling it means a lot to him. How can you tell? Oh, I can't, really. Your father's not a modern man. He's not like you. He's never been very good at expressing himself. He sublimates his feelings and then releases them in rapid bursts of emotion. It's usually anger. But ever since the dog died, he hasn't been the same. He says he's trying to change. He's even taking dance lessons. With this gift, I think he's trying to reach out and tell you that he loves you. And that's why I'm suggesting that no matter what he gives you, just be gracious and accept it. And then tomorrow, I'll go through his drawers and I'll find the sales slip. And you can return it and get something that you really want. That would be pretty subversive of you, wouldn't it? Maybe it would be. Angus, I'm not a happy person. <laughs> you should probably go check on dinner. There's something wrong with Mom. What? She's not happy. Well, she looks happy to me. Well, she's not. And I thought, wow, I mean, for 18 years, I have accepted the way we live as the truth. I never thought to question it. We have a fully stocked refrigerator. We get good TV reception. The picture seems so well defined. But really, it's not. It's not. No, it's not. Don't you see? Oh. I'm not happy either. Don't you want to know why you're not happy? I should probably go check on dinner. Things have been pretty weird around here lately. Everybody thinks they want to change. Oh, really? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <clears throat> I mean, don't they know? We can't change what we are. I guess maybe they don't. I mean, look at Dad. He's trying to be more open with his feelings. He's trying to be the Mr. Brady we always wanted him to be, but to what end? His golf game's worse than ever. I don't know what Katie's problem is. Probably sex. What about sex? She met this guy a couple of weeks ago, Rhett. For some odd reason, she's completely taken with him. But the problem is that uh, Rhett says his religious beliefs don't allow for sex before marriage. Well, you can imagine how frustrated Katie must be. But joke's on him. Katie can't control herself even for a short time. Well, it's not her fault. Mom and Dad made her exactly who she is. They decided a long time ago they weren't going to make the same mistake as they made with me. So they let her run wild. They let her come and go as she pleased. They let her hop from boy to boy, from bed to bed, without so much as a word of reprimand or a shaving of guilt. They created a hot young vixen with no scruples. Let's get out of here. What do you mean? I mean, I want you to be my friend. My wife, forever. I love you, Katie. You want to have sex with me, don't you? No, not at all. That's not what I'm looking for. I want a companion, someone I can...
trust and respect. I'm tired of this high school dating routine. I'm tired of having no one to share the rest of my life with. Well, you really believe what you're saying, don't you? So it's settled then? We'll leave at midnight. I'm not sure. Why not? It's just... my family. What about them? Well, they'd never believe that this is possible. They'll never know. That's the romantic beauty of the notion. What was that? It's probably just the milkman here to see Mom. I don't know why Mother should be unhappy. Maybe she feels guilty. You know, they made her president of the Don Mills Historical Society, but she's been so busy at home, she barely has time for it. And, like, they really need her. They're waging this big battle against that giant dairy conglomerate in an attempt to stave off the extinction of the milkman in the neighborhood. I mean, if she doesn't keep up the relentless struggle, the milkman will be doomed. I know that we agreed that you and only you would decide if and when we could see each other outside the line of duty, but I just want you to know that I'm interested in seeing you tonight. Oh, I don't think so. Why not? I don't think it's what I want. How can you know if it's what you want if you've never really let yourself go when you've been with me? Although you won't let me show it, I'm willing to help you explore yourself, Joanne. I really should make this icing. Will you see me at midnight? All right. The dog died. No one's been quite the same. But let me tell you, all this talk of change, I mean, it's just talk. I mean, why can't they be more like me? I know what I am. I recognize that over the years I've repressed more than all three Bronte sisters at once. Well, it used to bug me, but then I said to myself, Lindsay, think of the creative possibilities. So, you know, now I accept what I am. I revel in it. And I incorporate it into my art. But your art has changed. It has? It has not. Yes, it has. You used to draw these, and, and now all you do is, is make these. These and these. Well, I like the way I am. Why should I want to change? I'm not happy either. <sighs> well, I guess I shouldn't really be that surprised. I mean, everybody knows the only way to be happy is to do what you did. What? You know, get out of here. Distance yourself enough from the family expectations so that you can be what you want to be. Expectations? That you be just like Dad. Strong, authoritative, always in control of any given circumstance. You know, a bit of a jerk. Oh, that's not that bad. When you lived here, that's exactly how you were. But by getting out of here, you've done it, haven't you? What do you think? Well, you're still seeing that woman that you told me about, huh? Julia? Yeah, her. Well, then you must have changed. I mean, women these days never put up with that heavy macho attitude for very long. <laughs> Society's next meeting, I've arranged for a prominent French historian to come and give a, a talk on the origins of the coup de sac. I don't know why I did it. I, I guess I thought we might learn something about where we all live. I mean, we don't even know what the word means. Coup de sac. Angus used to take languages. He'll know what it means. Angus, coup de sac. 
Our literal translation would be bomb of bag. I always thought it meant dead end. Well, I think it's time for the gift giving. Who'd like to go first? I didn't get you anything. I forgot. Sorry. I'll go. I wrote you a poem. This is another bitter poem about the cruelty of human nature for your birthday. That's the title. <clears throat> Yesterday, I saw a flower sitting in a flower bed. A little girl, her temper dour, walked up and shot the poor plant dead. <coughs> Today, a green bug crossed my path. It smiled at me. This raised my wrath. I picked its legs off one by one, and then I shot it with my gun. <coughs> the flower dead in the flower bed, the bug bleeding on my rug. For them a tear I cannot shed, their deaths I cast off with a shrug. And even though I feel this way, I know this is a happy day. My bitterness I can't obey, so I wish you, my brother Angus, a very happy birthday. Thanks. Very interesting, Lindsay, but not one of your best. <clears throat> uh, my turn now. I'd like to propose a toast. It's a father's responsibility to help his son down the thorny pathway to manhood. When you were 14, that's when it started, I got to your first golf club membership, the first important step in becoming a man. When you were 16, I got you driving lessons, both kinds. When you were 18, I got you your first case of beer, and I made sure you understood you were not to use these gifts simultaneously. Of that, I'm quite happy. I realize now that these gifts were not enough to sustain any sort of long-term emotional growth. So today, as I toast you on this, your 21st birthday, I present you with a gift that I realize is probably long overdue. I'm sorry. To Angus. You got him a car? A new car? Probably a used car. Don't be ridiculous. Those are my car keys. You can use my car to see your new gift. She'll be waiting for you down the street at the donut shop at midnight. She. She'll teach you everything you want to know. You got him a girl? A call girl? Definitely a used girl. Everyone, please! She is not a call girl. She is not a used girl. She is my dance instructor. So, you think I need dance lessons? They've helped me enormously. They've helped me to get in touch with my inner feelings, to display them. They have, have they? Yes, they have! Remember to be gracious, Angus. Everyone can always use the occasional dance lesson. What makes you think I need dance lessons? I think it's perfectly obvious why I think you need dance lessons. And do you want them or not? Do you want them or not? Why don't we have dessert? I forgot to make the... Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Happy birthday to Angus. Happy birthday to Angus. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Angus. It's a very fine looking cake. Finer than fine. It's a... Failure? It sure is. Don't touch my face! When are you going to grow up? When are you going to start making sense? <laughs> is there any ice 
ice cream. You know, I like mine a la mode. I'll get it. Well, are you going to accept my gift, or will you fling it back in my face? Dad, I live with a girl, a woman. Her name is Julia. Since when? Last November. Why didn't you let us know? When can we meet her? I don't know. Julia and I have a very open, honest, mutually satisfying relationship. I don't need dance lessons. It's so funny. Your brother is living with a girl, a woman called Julia. They have an open, honest, mutually satisfying relationship. And he doesn't need dance lessons. That's great. It sounds like she's got him very well trained. start making sense. Maybe that's why I'm making babies. But maybe if I had a real opportunity to drop this act, I would. Or would I? Try it and see, Lindsay. Try it and see. Bert? Where are you going? He acts as if he's not interested. But I have a feeling he's down at that donut shop right now. He's not like you. He's not callous and insensitive. How can you tell? He never says a damn thing. Go to your studio or something, something where we can do this privately. This is private. This is a private lesson. <laughs> it's for you, too. So I'm not good at public displays. This is not public. If you think I'm here, that's the first problem. Don't think anyone is here, but you. That's that's love. Yes, I'm not a happy person. 
Do you know why? No, not really. Do you want to tell me about it? No, not really. No, not really? I can't seem to be able to do that in front of Julia. I mean, with you, it's relatively easy once I assure myself that I'm never going to see you again. But with Julia, I have this role that I play. It's strong, emotionless, always in control of every given situation. I never let her know what I'm feeling. What is it that you are feeling for her? I feel love. I feel a lot of love. So why do you play a role? It's what's expected of me. Who expects that? My family, people, Julia. Why would they all expect that? Because that's the way I've always been. I don't know. Why don't you tell her that? What? I don't know. Or maybe you should ask your family for some input. My family? I don't want to talk to my family. I think maybe you should. I can't. I think maybe you can. What makes you think so? Because I have released you. Can't you feel that? You know, Dr. Jack had the same problem, and I released him, too. You did? Yes. Doesn't it show? No. Well, I think that he probably has momentary relapses, but, you know, since my instruction, I'd say he is a changed man. He is. Look, thank you for your input, but I really have to go, okay? You won't tell anybody I was here, will you? No, no, no. It's your birthday. This is all I'll ever want. This is perfect. Look what I found. Your mom's? I think you were right. I think it might be possible. I think if we get out of here, anything might be possible. Great, this is... But I want to do it properly. I'll go set up a ladder. Okay. It didn't show. I'm sorry, I didn't know he wouldn't show. That's okay. Happens all the time. But you understand that because I was not given 24 hours notice of cancellation, I will still have to charge you. Of course. Look, why don't you spend the night at our house? Save your trip home in the rain, and I can use a lesson. I can understand why you might be a little upset with me. You can? Yes. Why? Remember when I told you my family died in that Ferris wheel accident? I remember. I was lying. They're alive. They're in the suburbs. <gasps> What's so funny? Is there more? Today was my birthday. That's why I went home. Oh, happy birthday. I'm not as old as I told you I was. Well, then you'll live longer. When I told them about you and me, I lied. I said we had an open, honest, mutually satisfying relationship. That's not that big a lie. You've been very upfront about what you had to offer me. And I don't mind, really. I told you earlier. I've adapted to be just like you. 
them just as emotionless. It took a lot of energy. It took a lot of thought control through self-hypnosis. But I'm used to it now. Is that all? Julia, would you open the door? I'm soaking wet. Is that all? I haven't exactly been faithful to you. Why are you telling me all this? I think I want to change all that. Why don't you tell me how you really feel? Make up your fucking mind! Yes, I need a taxi. Wow. What a setup. Huh? This is great. Um, I didn't really want another lesson. I just wanted to talk. About anything in particular? Mrs. Feelgood called me today. She wants to see me. That won't solve your problems. You're right. Come on. Show you where the guest room is. I want to sleep here. Okay. Yes? 
What is it? My name is Julia. Oh, we've been looking forward to meeting you. This is not the time or the place. What is it you want, then? It's Angus. He has to learn to deal with you. You have to learn to deal with him. I hate that word. What? Deal. What does she mean, anyway? Just go down and open up, Jack. You'll catch pneumonia. I don't trust her. What has she done to him? What have you done to him? What have you done to him? Does she mean my cooking? I knew she was trouble. If you mean the ham, it was well cooked. In fact, it was a little overcooked. Now drop the body. Look, I want him to get better. I do. But he needs help. Maybe professional help. I am a professional. Drop the body. I don't think you understand. The sooner you comply, the sooner we'll be able to help him. Dilated. Not wearing any shoes. Is he on some sort of medication? I'm sorry, I don't know. Oh. oh, there's a bruise on his upper left cranium. I smell donuts on his breath. Really? Oh, no. It's just aftershave. What's happening? Who the heck are you? She's my dance instructor. She's just staying the evening. I knew he'd want to come back here for some input. Can you tell what's wrong with him? He's unwell. He's unconscious. He's unhappy. Don't touch his face. Uh, Lindsay, get her out of here. I can't believe you brought that dance instructor back for the night. She needed a place to stay. Well, your sudden sympathy for the birthday present really surprises me. Suddenly, I'm under suspicion. You've always been under suspicion. Oh. At least he's dry now. Has returned. He's feeling a bit uh, under the weather, but I think he'd appreciate some company. Your company. Well, I'm pretty busy at the moment. Oh, well, never mind. I guess he can muster through the night by himself. All right, I'll do it. I'll meet you up on the hill as soon as I can, okay? Okay. Here, could you take this? Sure. Do you use, like, like, bongo drums in your work? You know? To dance to, you mean? Yeah, like I went to this place one time and they, everyone had to take their um, shoes off. For bongoing? I mean, they hit with their feet, you mean? Well, no, it was like a dance class, but it, you know, they used bongos, but it really smelled like feet. He met you at the donut shop, didn't he? That's a lovely dress, Mom. My son, Angus. He met you, didn't he? I'm not at liberty to say. Oh, please. It's important to me. He doesn't wear aftershave. He barely have to shave. I'm not at liberty to say. So anyway, yes. do you ever play any music, or do you sing, or does Dad sing? I don't, I don't remember, but I think probably he does make some kind of noise. 
Oh, oh, like he makes whatever, no, like a primal kind of. Yeah, that would be best, I would say, but I shouldn't judge what primal is, actually. Hmm. Excuse me, Mom, but uh, what's the occasion? Oh, my son is unconscious upstairs in his bed. And you think he'll be hungry when he wakes up? No. My mother always bakes when she gets upset. That's what I'm good at. It's comforting. What? To be good at something. I'm good at art. Something's burning. Oh. Oh. Maybe we should call the fire department. It's just your babies. Oh. I guess I forgot about them. Is this your art? Yeah. You can relax. You're not that good. You really think so? I guess I've come to say goodbye and to thank you for the inspiration. For the longest time, I've been pretty uncertain about the possibility of true modern romance where man and woman are equal partners in a mutually satisfying relationship. But you, you're living it. Congratulations. Tomorrow, Brett and I will be joined together forever. How did I get here? You may ask yourself, but I don't know. Julia must have brought me. That's it. Why would she want to do that? She wants to get rid of me. Oh, no. You'll be OK. I have to get going. Did you say something about being together forever? Here comes the bride. Red even set up a ladder. Just because you want to learn how to control your massive libido doesn't mean you should marry this guy, Rhett. It's not going to solve anything. What's going to happen when you decide you need something more, when, when Rhett's not good enough for you? Why are you trying to stop me? I, I'm not trying to stop you. Yes, you are. You're trying to stop me from finding happiness like you did. You haven't found happiness, have you? Yes, I have. No, you haven't. Don't play games with me, Angus. You're not a very good liar. All right. I'm just trying to stop you because I know that leaving doesn't help. You have to deal with your problems at the source. I hate that word. What? Deal. I think we all do. So what does that mean? You remember that year we spent the entire summer at the cottage? Dad stayed in the city? No. You were four years old. No. Before we went to the cottage, I planted a seed in the front garden. It was a watermelon seed. Oh, that summer. A couple days before we left, it started to sprout. And every Sunday night, Dad would call us up and tell us how the melon was growing. Dad surprised us by showing up at the cottage at the end of the summer. He didn't bring the watermelon, though. He wanted us to be able to see it for ourselves. And as soon as we got home, we jumped out of the car and rushed to see. And there it was sitting on a bed of flattened impatience. The biggest watermelon we'd ever seen. We had a big patio party to celebrate. We invited all the neighbors and they had a slice. You were so proud. You said that the watermelon would forever be your number one fruit. It seemed like the perfect end to the summer. It wasn't so perfect. No, it wasn't. You know the truth? The melon was a fake. Dad had Mrs. Vilkut put it there just before we got home. That's right. How do you know? Lisa Vilkut told me during Truth or Dare at a slumber party about six years ago. I was devastated. I can imagine how you must have felt when you found out. Well... So is that why you came back? Because you have to deal with your anger towards Dad with regard to the melon? That's right. Because otherwise, you'll always be afraid of getting close to anyone. Because they might turn out to be another melon. If you let yourself get too attached to them, you might find out that they're not for real. Absolutely. What? I'm sorry. I have to get going. 
Rhett's waiting for me. Katie, you'll never make it out of never here. Never make it out of 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 here. Oh. So what did he want at the donut shop? I really don't think it's my place to say. Maybe he wanted sex. Oh, Lindsay, you're so repressed. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, maybe he wants to be bad. Maybe he wants to be more like Dad. Oh, don't be absurd. Angus is a modern boy. He's got a girl, a woman. He's a very open, caring individual. How do you know? Be honest with yourself, Mother. When was the last time you saw him dance? At your cousin's wedding. The rumba doesn't count. I bet a lot of your male students would prefer to have sex than a dance lesson if they were given the choice. Well, I don't give them the choice. Yeah, but if you did. If I did, you're probably right. But I think most men are like that. They have some strange notions of what it is to be a man, and they don't want to look foolish, you know? So uh, given the choice between emoting and having sex, they would choose sex because they think it's mechanical, and they think they're always in control. But what they don't understand or see is that it's just as easy to look foolish during sex, you know? Especially when you take it as seriously as most men do. Your father's not so bad anymore. Well, how come I saw him talking to Mrs. Feelgood today? She called him on her portafone. You okay? No, I'm not. What is this? It's a golf ball. What do you think you're doing? I'm sorry. It was an accident. I hooked my shot. It hit the tree and deflected back into the kitchen. <laughs> it was a hundred to one shot. It won't happen again. I guarantee it. You're lying! You can't guarantee it. Don't you understand your games hurt people? It was an accident. I'm sorry. I didn't know anyone was in the kitchen. You don't understand, do you? Why didn't you tell me Helene Veal good call today? Because it doesn't matter. Why doesn't it matter? Because it doesn't. You're playing games with me. I'm not. Then why don't you tell me what you feel? You know what I think? I think your family needs a pet. Please be gone when I get back. No candy boxes, diamond ring will satisfy my need. No Ferrari, baby. Just doesn't count the speed. All I want is. What's going on? What is this? It's a watermelon. Is that it? That's enough for now, I think. You know, I'm not as manipulative as I used to be. That's good to know. Do you want me to prove it to you? No, that's all right. Thank you. I think that's a great idea. Why don't you show everyone how you feel? You mean do a little dance? Yes. Or better yet, why don't you all perform for each other? Get down. Tonight? What a good idea. Who is she? I want. Hey, who would like to start? You're all satisfied. That was the most abysmal recital ever given by a student of mine.
could see that you were really trying in there. Well, no one earns points for trying around here. Well, whose fault is that? I'll do that. No, you won't. I can check a roast myself. Thank you very much. It's not as if it was some God-given gift granted to only the women of this world. It's not ready. I can't believe Dad couldn't dance. Can you believe it? What are you doing? You know what I think? I think you're glad Dad couldn't dance. I think you think it gives you justification for staying the way you are. That's not true. Anyone can dance if they want to. Get out of my way. Wait a minute. There's something else you should know. The summer Dad and Mrs. Vealgood faked the melon. They also started having an affair. I think they're still having one. Well, no wonder I don't trust men. So what are you saying? Maybe we can never change the way we are. Maybe it's our fate. Well, I can't accept that. And at some point, everyone has to accept responsibility for his or her own actions. This is me doing just that. Keep the luggage. But no, 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 no. After what I've seen of this Motley crew, I'm not so sure anymore. No. Tonight I have figured out what I really want. I look at you and realize that all I really want is a big polka dotted dress and a lawn chair. I would just take the chair with me wherever I went and I'd plunk it down wherever I wanted and I would watch the world go by. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm a spectator at heart and I have never had any relationships of my own. But you know what they say, those who can't do, teach. Luckily, I can't do. And there's no reason I couldn't do it from the lawn chair. So why don't you two tell each other what you most want? So, you found me out. I guess I'm still afraid of embarrassing myself. Now, hold on a minute. I know you've found a way of shutting me out. I know you've learned to avoid my influence, and I think I understand. I'm sorry if my birthday gift wasn't entirely appropriate. I, I want you to know that I'm proud of you. I feel if there's one thing I can say I did right, it's that I let you find your own way of doing things. And you did. <laughs> As for me, I, I don't know what to say, except that it's not as clear-cut and simple as you make it out to be. What does that mean? Would you like a pain reliever? Your family's just like any other family. I know. How did you find out about the watermelon? Mrs. Vealgood. What? I used to watch Mrs. Vealgood late at night. Ooh. Ever since her husband left her, she had this sort of routine. After she put her kids to bed, she'd pour herself a glass of something brown. She'd begin to shimmy. Get down. I knew I shouldn't be watching, but I don't know, I guess I found it better than television. On 
on a slow-moving train. When we got back from the cottage after the patio party, I went over to watch. Did you see the look on his face when he saw that watermelon? <laughs> I felt dizzy. I fell. What was that? You didn't confront your father? No. When I found out the truth about the melon, I gathered up all the remaining slices and rinds, took them up to the top of the hill, and buried the melon. Angus? When I got home, Dad was waiting for me. I suppose you're wondering why I did it. I don't know. It seemed the right thing to do. On the other hand, perhaps something can be learned from this evening. You should never commit yourself so totally to any one thing, or any one person, for that matter. If you do, you lose control. You end up embarrassing yourself. Commitment sucks the life right out of you. And on the other hand, if you treat life as some sort of game, you can get anything you want from it. There's nothing wrong with losing control. Have I made myself clear? I think you know that. I think you love me. For some odd reason, you just won't admit it. Love you. No, I don't think so. Maybe I can't blame you for not being honest with me. I mean, I haven't exactly been honest with you. I'm not as disinterested in you as I pretend to be. I really care for you. I haven't went as far as to convince myself I'd do anything for you, even act completely emotionless. But I can't do it anymore. It's like wearing a plastic bag over your head. A, it's not very much fun. B, you can't live that way for very long. Hello, Helene. Did I wake you? No. Oh. Well, look, um, please don't keep calling me. So I guess you two don't want to tell each other what you most want, eh? I guess this is just not how this family operates. It's not how this family operates. It's nobody's fault. We just don't say things out loud like that. This family needs a pet. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Something you can all rally around like a cat or a bird. Or a snake. We had a dog. But he died last November. Oh. Busty. What kind of dog? A great big mutt. Here. Oh. We're still trying to cope with his sudden demise. What happened? Nobody knows. It wasn't as if he was particularly old. Or diseased. He just dropped dead one day. It was a very sad day. Especially for Dad. He had really high expectations for that dog. If Busty didn't fetch his stray golf balls, Dad wouldn't feed him his dinner. Funny thing was, Busty never did bring back the balls. Hmm. He hid them somewhere. No one knows where. But he still got his dinner. Because Dad didn't really care. He just learn to lower his expectations without acknowledging it to himself. God, how I envied that dog. That would be the milkman. Want to see where he's buried? Yeah. But first, you tell me what you really want.
Well, for someone who isn't sure if this is what she wants, you sure seem awfully glad to see me. Couldn't we just sit here for a while? Sure. Okay. Joanne, you know how much I respect you, and you know I enjoy spending time with you. So if, if we, if there's, if, if we can, look at me. I must look so silly to you. I, I mean, usually I don't have any problem with words, but tonight I'm, uh, I'm tongue-tied. What is it? Get the best view from here. <laughs> is he for real or what? He probably thinks he is. He's young. <laughs> he just wants a love slave. Answer me one question. Why do you play so fanatically when you're so bad? <laughs> it's comforting! What is? To be so bad at something and still keep playing. It says something wonderful about the human condition. What's that? Shows how much goddamn hope we have. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. I want to try new things. I want to be more independent of the family. For years, I've subjugated my desires to their needs, and I, I think just for once, I, I deserve a chance to do exactly as I please. Don't you? Yes, definitely. Dad, put the golf club down and back away from that melon. Dad, I'd like to talk to you. Can't you see I'm trying to concentrate? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want to know what you meant. What? When you said it's not as clear-cut as I make it out to be. This is the life, eh? <laughs> Going from place to place in a lawn chair. Oh. Yeah. Because you really don't want to change, isn't it? Why do you want to know? Julia loves me. So? So why do I keep pretending I don't care? What do you think? I think we better move on. Are you sure this is what you really want? Sure, I'm sure. I want to find Bert. I think I like playing games with her. It's sort of fun. That's natural. She'll get used to it. But I'm not that good at it. She's smart. She can see through it. What's the point? What are you trying to say? Why do I play so fanatically when I'm so bad at it? I don't want to end up like... I can't. I can't. You know what I mean? I just did something despicable. I never thought I'd say this, but 
Is anybody hungry? We're all hungry. Oh, let's go. Taken? No. I lied to you before. Right here. At the dinner table. When I'm with Julia, I never display a thing. I'm always in control. But I've seen you dance. When? At your cousin's wedding? The rumba doesn't count. Why would you want to treat her like that? She's not family. I mean, you want to change, right? No, that's just it. I mean, I don't think I do. I like the way I am. I mean, just because she made me feel things that I never felt before, and just because I started to have these flashes of emotion, and, and just because they made me want to reach out and touch her and, and say, hey! I really want to share this with you. I really want to dance with you. That doesn't mean I have to show it. Does it? What? You don't have to defend me. Well, I'm not trying to defend you. You're always trying to defend him. He can do no wrong in your eyes. Don't you think I haven't noticed his shortcomings? Do you really think I believed he was such a great boy? Nobody could possibly be as good as I made him out to be. Why make him out to be something he's not? Don't you understand? Positive thinking. It's what being a good mother is all about. Well, then you're definitely a good mother. Don't you understand? I don't want to be a good mother anymore. <gasps> oh! Nice throw, Mom. Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I don't know. I, well, I do know why I did that. Could we adjourn to the living room? Do you remember when I came up the hill and I told you that I'd just done something despicable? I wasn't joking. The milkman was here tonight. He was dancing half naked under the hot patio lights covered with whipped cream. I want you to understand that the milkman and I have never been anything more than just friends. But I needed to find out if this was the kind of independence that I was looking for, that I wanted. I've always associated the milkman with a heavy smell of cream ever since that first day when he showed me his refrigeration unit. So there we were, completely iced in the face and dancing. I mean, here was a man who was willing to do anything to fulfill my secret fantasies. And he liked to talk to me. It's great to be able to do exactly what you please just once, isn't it? Joanne. Joanne. <laughs> this is not part of our whipped cream fantasy. Oh, really? <laughs> that is despicable. What a waste of whipped cream. I guess it wasn't what you wanted. But it was what I wanted, just at that moment. But if you wanted it, you would have taken it. I'm a married, middle-aged mother of three. I do volunteer work occasionally. And? And that's it. That's it? It's hard to believe, isn't it? Why I should feel bound by your expectations is totally beyond me. I'm sorry. My wedding dress. I know that this may come as a shock to you all, but I want to forego sex completely for the time being. Oh. 
And I thought I had a chance to get what I wanted when I met Red. At first, I was only attracted to him for his strict religious beliefs. But he sort of grew on me. I never thought for a minute that he'd ask me to get out of here. Yeah. So what are you doing here? Steve. Well, the alarm. The alarm, my ankles. You were out of here. Derek. You could have just kept going. You like the way you are. Sven. What if once I'm ready, he can't fulfill my desires? I mean, I've been with a lot of experienced men. Paco. But I still don't know what an orgasm is. What I mean is that, Katie, the reason we've never discussed orgasms is because we believe it's something that happens naturally in a strong, loving relationship. It's not that natural. It's a skill, and acquiring a skill takes a lot of practice, just like... Golf? It's really not something you should worry about. It doesn't mean you're not ready to get out of here. And if it is a skill, you can rest assured it's a lot easier than golf to master. That's good to know. Wow. I guess the cat's really flying out of the bag tonight. Is it healthy? I don't think so. But I'll be honest, too. I've been with a man. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. His name was Bert. He came around selling tickets to the fireman's ball. He wasn't the most beautiful man I'd ever seen, but his hands were big and strong. They were pretty near perfect. I asked him to come in and see my drawings. When he saw them, he suggested I get out of here and to hurry. He said he'd take me. And that made me sad. You see, I could feel my artistic rage slipping away, and, and though a, a tingling sensation was taking its place, it just wasn't all the Brontes had promised it would be. It seemed like I had two hopeless choices to decide between. I chose to stay here and attempt to reconstruct my sense of rage. I have failed. think about him a lot? Yes, I think about him a lot. I miss him a lot. And sometimes, in the middle of the night, I think I see his shadow standing in my bedroom doorway and... <laughs> I, want... I just want him to touch my face. I don't know how it ended up like this. I mean, I've been here from the start. I thought I had a rough idea what was going on. Well, we just do what's expected of us. Would you believe it if I told you that the only reason I act the way I do is because I feel you expect it of me? I didn't believe it myself for a long time. When the dog died, I had to reevaluate things. I realized he was the only one who still needed me. I mean, just once, just once, I wish one of you would confide in me when you had a problem or a, or a thought even. Just once, I'd like to feel my opinions were sought out rather than dreaded. But who am I kidding? I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with games. Games that kill. It was just a broken window, Jack. I wanted to admit it for a long time. I killed Busty. I didn't mean to. I swear, it was an accident. I, like you, couldn't believe it when he simply dropped dead. So late one night, I performed an autopsy in my basement workshop. Do you know what I found? Half a hockey puck, a nine-volt battery, and 16 golf balls. His intestinal tract was completely clogged. Busty ate my balls.
He ate my balls. <laughs> Maybe if my balls hadn't been so durable. Looks like catharsis to me. Yep. Julia, this is my father, this is my mother, this is Katie, and that's Lindsay. Hello. Isn't it time for breakfast? Never gonna let you down. No, I'm never gonna let you down. Hey, Jimmy and me bound together, but I'm never gonna let you down. Hey, Susie and you, Mon Carmen, and I'm never gonna let you down. Hey, Jenna, what smile, smile. Never gonna let you, let you down. 